I'll get side, so it don't matter. All right. We're going to be talking about a couple things today. Uh, we're going to talk about the wet cell battery and the dry cell battery. Ladies. Okay. The wet cell battery is, is a great example of that is like a car battery. Okay. And they have this liquid in here called sulfuric acid. And there's like 12 plates that go across, and they're alternating plates, uh, one made out of lead, one made out of lead dioxide, okay? Every, every two, or every pair of these plates create two volts, which makes this a 12-volt battery. So every car battery is a 12-volt battery, okay? And this is what we call a wet cell battery, okay? And this sulfuric acid is very good at conducting electricity. The dry cell battery is what we use every day. It's what you use in your radios, you use them in flashlights, things of that nature. It has a little, little knob on the top, that's a positive charge. On the bottom, it has a negative charge. And that's where you conduct electricity, positive and negative. Now, each one of these is 1.5 volts. As I add batteries, bigger things like big radios require more batteries. I want to add those voltage together. So if I have two batteries, I'm going to have 3.0 volts total. Okay? And what it is, it's like a, a chemical paste inside. There's a rod in the middle of this battery that goes along the center that conducts the electricity from that chemical paste. And when you turn on that, that appliance or whatever it is, you turn on the radio, whatever it might be, the electrons are given off. And, over, and there's a chemical reaction happening inside that battery. So that's why eventually that battery drains out. Because once there's a chemical reaction, it uses up all that paste. And then your battery is no longer any good. Okay. So that's a dry cell battery. All right, we talk about voltage. There's a difference between voltage and current. Okay, what kills you? Current or voltage? No, current kills you. So the amount of current flow is what actually kills your body because it, it flows through you, okay? Here's an example. The Van de Graaff machine only gives off 750,000 volts. Static, rubbing your foot on the carpet, one million volts. You didn't know that, did you? Okay? So that's an example. Another thing you need to know is that batteries uh, provide voltage, but they also flow from high concentration to low concentration. So if there's a high concentration of electrons, it's always going to flow to where there's less concentration. Okay? Uh, another example is of uh, current and amps. Matter of fact, let's see here. This right here gives off, uh, let's see. This is 0 0.5 amps of the Van de Graaff machine. Just to give you an idea, this actually produces 60 amps. A big difference, the current. That's the difference in current right there. So the Van de Graaff machine will not kill you, but electrical outlet can actually kill you. Okay, yes? Did you ever test the Van de Graaff machine? It's upstairs, I need to go get it. I just haven't gone up there. Okay. All right, now, the regular outlet only provides 120 <coughs> volts. Dryer outlets are different. They're shaped different. They're bigger. 240 volts. So twice as much as a regular outlet. Okay? And then uh, there's also a voltage. Here's the definition. It's the difference in the number of electrons between two terminals. So if I have a... Y'all remember these old 9-volt batteries? Nobody ever uses them anymore. Those little short batteries, the little rectangular ones that have the two terminals. If one is 12 volts, one terminal is 12 volts, the other one is 3 volts, you take the difference between that. So what's 12 minus 3? What's 12 minus 3? Oh, 9 volts. Okay. So that's what we call it a 9 volt battery. Okay? That's what we call it a 9 volt battery. All right, any questions on that? No. All right, last thing is there's four things that determine the amount of resistance. If a wire is narrow, it's going to have more resistance because it's very narrow. So it's going to have resistance to flow. If it's a long wire, it's going to have more resistance because it hasn't traveled so far, a certain great distance. It's low resistance if it's wider, it has more flow, more current, and also it's going to have less resistance if it's a short wire because it hasn't traveled so far. So that's the main thing that we're going to be covering today when we do our assignment. All right, any questions? All right, that's it.